Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome. My name is Wes Marshall. I'm Luke Levea. I'm Daniel Corrales. I'm Brendan Wardrop. During the design of our project, we were mentored by Youngblood Tyler Associates, Andrew and Jerry Becker. We'd like to say thanks for the help and patience. <laughs> As you can see here, this is our final concept, which is a single family residential subdivision. And we've got two roads, 19 parcels. The goals for, the initial goals for our development were to, of course, attain a maximum profit while placing the maximum number of parcels possible. An additional goal was to successfully integrate our proposed community into the surrounding existing community. Uh, so here, what we have here is a site flyover we did. Our site was located in Rico County, Virginia. And we, our site is in between Route 33 and 250 off of Worcester Road. Uh, our site was in R3C, now C stands for conditional. And what this means is we had conditions for the site. So a few more a minimum floor area. We had a fencing on the southern edge and around a graveyard on the site. We also had to maintain a uh, tenth of an acre of our wetlands. We had 0.128 acres on site, so we had to be careful when we were reducing that. Our total site area was 7.92 acres. The only real obstruction on site was some overhead power lines over the northern part of the site. Uh, we created two layout designs. Our first one utilized a grid-like network. And as you can see here, we managed to maximize the site and we got 21 houses on this. The problems with this though, there are a lot of 90 degree turns and there was a few intersections which brought up our pricing. Also, a lot of road was needed for this. So we went ahead with our second design, which I'll show you here. And with this, we took out a lot of roadway and we just utilized one long road going through the center of the site and has a little spur road. Uh, there's less lots with this. There's 19 instead of 21, so we did lose a little bit of profit there. And one of our lots did not meet the minimum required lot area first time through, so we went through to our proposal side with this, and we fixed that up. Um, minimum water area was 1,000 square feet, and we got it all done. One of them was very close, but we didn't manage to get it. Uh, we ensured there's a 300 foot radius of curvature on all our roads, which is why we're in Marekko. And we also utilized offset cul-de-sacs, and the reason for this was we couldn't reach all the parts of our property originally, so we used these, and we managed to get driveways in. All right, the next task was to create a site grading plan and roadway design for Worcester Place. The overall goal for the site grading plan was to create a functional drainage pattern uh, while minimizing costs. For the northern section of the uh, area, we implemented two low points, primarily uh, BMPs. Right here, we put a bioretention cell, and over here, we put a detention pond, uh, and the grading was to direct runoff towards those areas. In the lower portion of the site, we utilized the existing wetlands located right here. Uh, we tried to follow the natural slope as closely as possible uh, to minimize cost and uh, directed runoff towards that area. Um, our design required that the wetlands running through the center portion of the, of the site, uh, the majority of those were to be filled in, um, which basically required that we uh, bring in some fill material or find some on the site. This being said, you can go to the next slide. When we were designing our roads, we set to excavate these down so that the final grade would be higher or lower than the surrounding properties. Uh, this allowed us to accumulate some fill material, which could be distributed as necessary throughout the site. Also, when designing our roadways, we strategically place low points throughout so that uh, stormwater runoff can be collected and handled as necessary. Also, this helps prevent inundation along the roadways, especially at the intersection um, for Hokey Long Road, which is the entrance road. We create a low point prior to the intersection uh, to collect that run uh, runoff and channel it into curb inlets. Uh, we did the same uh, procedure for the short road. All design standards came from Public Works Design Manual. All right, now with the uh, <coughs> To do this, we delineated a uh, single watershed for the entire site, which ended up being about 20 acres for our just under 8 acre site. And uh, using this, we used the TR55 method to calculate time of concentrations, runoff volumes, and uh, runoff rates. And with every, with every construction project, we 
utilities, our next task was to place the water system. Our existing connection would be an 8-inch line running along Worcester Road, which would be the road just north of our property. We connected directly across from our entrance to the site at the 8 inches. We have two fire hydrants located on site just inside the entrance and just before the intersection. These two would be adequate to provide flow for our, our calculated 800 gallon per minute fire flow. Just um, just after the second fire hydrant, the pipe diameters were decreased to six because the rest of the system wouldn't require the same calculated flow. We have, here in our site design, we have a dead end system as opposed to the traditional looping system. It was determined that this would be more economical for our site. So at both of our terminal ends in the cul-de-sacs, we have a flushing hydrant to prevent stagnation in those pipes. We, our site required one blow-off valve at a low point along the Pokey Long Road alignment and one air release valve at the call site. Next was the sanitary system. During our design, we used a 400% peak factor and a 300 gallons per day per unit as standard from the Henrico County Department of Public Utilities. All of our pipe calculations were done with the rational method. We ensure that each pipe had the uh, velocity between 2 and 10 feet per second. And we calculated diameters of 8 inches for each. So the entire site has 8 inch pipes. The existing connection for our sanitary system was located southeast of our site. Our site ends here, so we'd have to obtain proper easements to <coughs> pipe all the way over here. When placing our sanitary manholes, we primarily followed the center line of our road our proposed roadway. We had to add two in the northern, the northern corners to provide access to the more remote locations. And of course, when placing our sanitary system and water systems, we maintained the 10-foot horizontal separation and 18-inch vertical separation. And wherever they crossed, we have one crossing here, it's not picking this, and one up there. The water lines always crossed over top. Alright, with any construction project, there is always concern of erosion and sedimentation. For our site, we use typical BMP practices in order to uh, manage the sedimentation. The uh, first step would be to excavate our detention pond for use as a sedimentation pond. And then the rest of our site was wrapped in silt and uh, diversion dikes in order to direct water flows in the appropriate direction. So let's make sure there are for the second phase of ESC, which basically uh, implements control measures during final grading, as well as uh, installation of site amenities, uh, many of the same techniques carried over uh, to this phase from phase one, uh, with the exception of some major differences such as uh, seating. Um, as you can see here, we had some silt insulation, which actually would carry on over to the cemetery uh, connection as well. Uh, those were to be installed during construction and installation of what utilities there. In addition, the construction entrance is to be widened for uh, two-way traffic on and off-site. Um, we didn't want uh, traffic building up on the uh, Worcester Road there. We figured that this phase of construction would be pretty busy. Uh, so for site, we had our cost estimate here, and you see the breakdown came out to be about $512,000. This came from about 50 line items we kept updated throughout the project. We also incorporated a contingency fund of 15%. And this is to cover any incidents, mistakes, or just kind of any other overestimates we may have in the project. So that gave us a grand total of roughly $590,000. And also with this, we want to see what we can reduce if we were to do it again. And just some ideas we came up with were you could remove the curb and gutter, raise the road, and use a ditch system. You would 
actually saved roughly $70,000, which is more than 10% of the project. So we thought that was a pretty good idea. You could also shorten the road, and you could uh, ease up a little bit on the clearing the road. Yeah, I was actually going to get off the piece and uh, run over as it is, so uh, ask the most questions. <laughs> <laughs>